So a lot of people have asked me, Hi Sean Spaulding! Disclaimer, there is no U in my last name. If you ask me a question and spell my last name with a U, I am 7842.5% less likely to answer your question. What's the difference between Game Maker Studio 1.x and Game Maker Studio 2? Game Maker Studio 2 is quite expensive, and I already own Game Maker Studio 1.x. Should I just keep using that? Well, it's kind of a big question, because an answer in terms of what's changed, the answer is... EVERYTHING! But also quite notably... BASICALLY NOTHING! Now, Game Maker Studio 2 has the same overall idea, philosophy, and the coding language and basic workflow is nearly identical, and it uses a lot of similar stuff and systems and ideas, and iterates on those ideas, because, you know, of course, it's Game Maker Studio 2, after all, right? But it is a wholly new IDE and wholly new program, and a lot of paradigms and systems have changed, so let's take a look at what. The whole UI is crazy different because it's been rebuilt from the ground up. I mean, just look at it, it's way better. It's all kind of built out of modular windows that you can kind of drag around, undock, redock, and use however you want. It can be a bit weird sometimes. Docs have tabs, but tabs can also seemingly contain docs, and to undock a thing you have to click the right thing, and it's not always clear which thing you need to click to drag to what thing to get it to... Uh, uh. But hey, at least it doesn't do this, and this. It's actually kind of like a modern, good UI, and it like makes sense and doesn't look like trash. Lots of things are better than they used to be, global game settings is less awful, everything feels more responsive, and while it can be a bit weird at times to customize it, it is thoroughly customizable. You can change a ton of things about how the UI behaves, which you couldn't in 1.x. The overall point here, though, is that almost everything in the UI has been improved in some way, like, seriously everything, and there are tons of tiny nice fixes and improvements, and a huge number of customizations that you can now make. Backgrounds are gone! In 1.x, if you wanted a static image that did nothing in your game and wasn't interactive, you'd use a background to be cheaper than, like, placing an entire object, or having code draw a sprite manually, or whatever you would do before, right? But now backgrounds are gone, and everything is a sprite. You can place sprites directly into the room, just as you could with backgrounds, without making objects, and now this means they can animate and do everything that sprites can do. The Room Editor! The Room Editor is way, 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 way less awful than 1.x's Room Editor. You can set brush sizes, rotate things, use a grid, don't use a grid, live animate the whole room, and remove multiple things at once without everything breaking, set room inheritance to make rooms based on other rooms, and a whole lot of the old problems with 1.x, like not being able to edit objects below other objects, is fixed by the addition of layers, which we'll come to in a- LAYERS! There's layers in the room editor now, specific layers for specific things. Layers fundamentally replace depth, although you can still basically use depth, it creates temporary layers, and layers are cheap, like, really, really cheap. So if you're worried because you don't know how to use you were used to using depth, don't worry. Why you gotta worry so much? Just just do your thing. But layers are great. You can run scripts on layers and do blendy things and create tile layers to work with tile sets. Proper ones. So tiles before were kind of a made-up fairy tale in 1.x and they didn't really exist properly. Uh, from what I know, you were just sort of splitting up backgrounds into multiple parts and then basically still just placing backgrounds in a slightly less horrible way in the room editor. In Game Maker Studio 2, there are proper tile layers and tile sets, meaning an actual grid is being stored by the game with information about what should be in each tile of that grid. This lets you do tile collisions really easily with cool new functions like tile map get add pixel, rather than having a bunch of O wall objects everywhere for that platform you're working on. These tiles can also animate, just like everything else, and finally there's also built-in auto-tiling. So that tutorial video I did on using a big script to auto-tile a 48 tile tile set in your room, you don't need it anymore, happens for free now. So you can paint lovely tiles everywhere and can see the results immediately, rather than just at runtime, which is a massive improvement. You can also use these to do a lot of other things other than just placing tiles, you can just use tile maps to do generally cool grid-related things in your game, but we'll come on to more of that stuff in some future Game Make Studio 2 tutorials. Workspaces! Workspaces are this weird, infinite void in which most of your windows will open. You can scroll infinitely in any direction, zoom out and zoom in, put things next to each other, see relationships and so on, which sounds very cool, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's... It just doesn't seem very good in practice. 
I mean, I don't even mean that it's badly implemented, I just mean that the main idea doesn't seem to really pay off, and in some ways you could consider the way it's currently set up to even potentially be slightly worse than 1.x, which just sort of created floating windows for everything, and that wasn't even that good. There's no good reason to pan around the workspace for things when you have access to your whole project in the resource tree or for larger projects via the new search command control T, which is awesome by the way, it was an excellent new feature of Game Make Studio 2, meaning really the fact that everything is contained inside a workspace rather than floating above it just means that it's kind of constricted by whatever windows surround that workspace. You can collapse these docs to get more space by pressing F12, but unless you have a 4K monitor, you're gonna find yourself doing this quite a lot. You can maximize code and put it on a tab too, and that's really the best way to do it. Unless you wanna go mad with claustrophobia and you're gonna to wanna to basically do this every time you're not working with a really small script just so that you have the space on screen. There's even really a lot of great new features here that fit this really well, like being able to split scripts into columns, view multiple scripts and tabs, which is amazing and really, really useful. But because everything kind of defaults to the workspace, the setup time to get to here is way too long and you have to keep doing it. And you're never really gonna wanna use these kind of cool code window splitting features in a workspace because you just don't really have room for it. You're gonna want it full screen and kind of full screen only. There have been the odd occasions though where I have been glad I'm able to see two things side by side or I have quickly panned from one small script to another nearby in my workspace and back on the occasion where I can remember where that thing is in the workspace. But they're far between and the savings in time there don't really seem worth it when they could have just put everything into tabs that could then be popped out as windows. I think these problems are kind of outweighed by a lot of the workflow improvements overall in the software, especially over 1.x, but workspaces, mm, yeah, I'm just not personally really feeling it yet. The image editor. So in 1.x, the sprite slash image editor was broken down into three windows for some reason. One was kind of the metadata for the sprite and its main settings. The second was like an animation previewer that let you pick a frame to edit and do some other kind of overall transformative things to the whole sprite. And the third was the image editor itself. Studio 2, all the features from that kind of uh, middle window, that second window, has kind of been fused into the first and third windows. So now you only have one sprite editor window and then one image editor. The image editor itself is a lot better than the old one, but it does have a lot of cool new features. You can split view now, draw while animating is a nifty thing that not many tools can actually do with some cool situational uses, and it definitely, definitely beats out the 1.x image editor. Well, mostly. There's some built-in effects from 1.x that were quite useful for making quick changes like hue sliders, fade animations, and so on, and currently under the effects menu in GMS2, the only thing listed is grayscale. Now, I know for a fact that more of this stuff from 1.x will be making its way across eventually, although I have no idea when or exactly which of those things, if all of them will make it across or not, I don't know. But really, overall, the image editor in GMS2 is as good or maybe really quite a bit better than it honestly needs to be, so that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and there's layers now. There's layers in the image editor as well. Everyone loves layers. Layers everywhere. It's not written in Delphi. It's written in C-sharp, and this basically is the reason why everything is better now. Why most things that were terrible about 1.x stayed terrible for so long, even though they were obviously terrible, and most importantly, why all the things that are better now can keep getting better. The main thing to understand is that 1.x was getting to a point where it's really sort of as good as it gets. Technologically, GMS2 actually can be improved in ways that 1.x mostly just can't because it's Delphi. Drag and drop is different and better. Drag and drop now basically has all the same power as GML. There's a few things missing here or there, but you can now more or less construct drag and drop logic the same way you structure code. There's no better evidence of this than the new fancy live preview stuff you can do to see exactly what your D&D actions would look like in code as you build it. The drag and drop also uses a fancy node-based system, which just makes it a little bit easier to kind of look at your overall chain of logic and kind of see how things flow and work, rather than just kind of a stack of icons and text fields you kind of saw before. GML is fundamentally the same. Although the script editor itself has seen a bunch of UX improvements, actually coding in GameMaker is exactly the same. Well, okay, not exactly. 
where new systems have been introduced, there have been obviously changes and new function groups made. So for the new features like layers, tiles, and cameras, there are new GML functions for doing cool stuff with those new features. Oh yeah, those cameras now. They make 3D a bit easier and can do some cool stuff. I did a whole other video on that though, so whatever. And for old systems that these new things replace, like backgrounds, views, depth, and so on, some of those functions have obviously gone away. However, there has been a ton of work done on backwards compatibility. Importing any old GM 1.x project into GMS2 will automatically rework all of the necessary things for you, and it should just work off the bat. Instance create, changing to instance create depth and instance create layer is probably the change that will catch the biggest number of people. But as I say, basically everything about how the language actually works uh, and using it like syntactically and so on is exactly the same as it has always been and won't really present any challenges to people moving over from 1.x. No more colon. There's no more colon in the name. It's, it's just not there anymore. Conclusions! Game Maker Studio 2 is clearly quite a bit better than Game Maker Studio 1.x. It has a lot of new features and is fundamentally a much better overall user experience, and importantly, it's only going to keep getting better and more powerful at a much faster pace than 1.x ever did. Because unfortunately, 1.x, due to its foundations, only really ever had so far it could ever go, and was really starting to reach its absolute limits. Importantly also, Game Maker Studio 2 is still Game Maker. Everything that GMS 1 has that was great still exists and it's all largely been added to or improved upon. More options, more features, more customizability, and a better user experience. If you have 1.x, do you need to buy GMS 2? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? And the answer's not really, but it is a lot better. If you're nearing the end of a project, you're only really going to cause yourself headaches by switching over to GMS2, even though the backwards compatibility is very strong. There's no need to do it unless something like layers or tiles is going to give you something your game desperately needs. I actually do have a project that I'm restarting in Game Make Studio 2, because tiles just make everything I want to do a thousand percent easier. 1.x is still a great tool, still very powerful, very feature rich and viable to use. YoYo have already committed to making sure that all the export platforms for 1.x continue to be properly supported and maintained for quite some time yet. But the issue is that 1.x is a tool that can no longer really grow. Not just because all their attention is being put into GMS2, even though it is, but because it was built on a foundation that could only ever go so far. If what it does now, today, suits your purposes, and it does do quite a lot, then keep at it. If you like Game Maker but kind of want more of it, it might be worth investing in a copy of Game Maker Studio 2. Well, that was longer than I thought it was going to be. Thanks for watching. I want to give a shout out to every one of my Patreon supporters without whom cool videos like this simply could not happen. I also want to give an extra special shout out to the following. Angel Rodriguez, Dan, Harold Guidry, and Jason McMillan. Thank you for supporting the work that I do, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, yes you, I mostly make video tutorials for Game Maker, so if you want to see more stuff like that, and more stuff like this, maybe click the subscribe button. I also stream game development on Twitch, so you can check that out too, I guess. If you really, really like what I do and want to get more involved in it, maybe consider becoming one of these cool wizards and dropping me a dollar or two a month on Patreon. If you hated this video, I'm not really sure why you're still here, but thanks for hearing me out at least. Cheers for listening. Bye-bye.